Wow. Stop it. The, the, the legal religious elite here have slapped them with a gig order. Stop this or else. Sometimes in parts of the world, our brothers and sisters in Christ are experiencing this today. Stop it or you'll be put to death. Their Bibles are taken out of their hands and they have to rely on meditation and memory of God's word. They have to meet in basements. They have to meet underground. And yet here we are, and wonderful, I'm thankful for the blessing we have at this point in season and time. Our day is coming, however. But at this point in time, the benefit that we can open God's word in public and read it for ourselves. Isn't that wonderful? But the day is coming when we will, in many ways, like Jesus said, stand before those who oppose God. And what would we say? Would we say, oh yeah, sorry, you know, you know what, you're right. Maybe it's a little offensive. I, I, I don't know. In many ways, COVID in ways shows us that this is a reality. And I'm not noking what decisions have been made uh, regarding how to handle COVID, but I think this paves a path. And it, you know, calls us to attention here that when people ask us to stop it, how will we respond? Will we lash out? Or will we remain cool and calm? under fire. And I'm preaching to myself, Andrew, to remain cool and calm because as part of Team Jesus, like Peter and John, we need to, in the midst of circumstance, not be dissuaded. Amen? Here's an analogy for you. I'm hoping you guys like hockey because that's one of the few sports I did play growing up. And I was thinking of this and reading this story. On a team, any good team, you have your fourth line. Your fourth line's your checking line. Their sole task, their sole mission is to get out there, fervorously pound by checking and forcing the opponent to the point they want to give up. They want to bash them through the boards. They want to wear them out, disorientate them to get them off their game plan, the coach would say. And any good fourth line that wreaks this havoc gets the team off their game. They start playing according to their game. They start playing according to their rules to the point that they want to make this line change. And here we see a, a hockey coach. I remember my good coaches over the years, the good ones would get the team together. Guys, guys, get it together. This is not the way we play. This is not our game. This is not our game plan. Let's get back to business. Let's get back to business. And I, I couldn't help but think and think of this analogy that the apostle Paul once told, I believe it was the Corinthians or it was Galatians, sorry, saying, who's bewitched you? Who's crept in and has kept you from believing the truth? Who's that body checking line that has gone out there and has dissuaded you and disorientated you to give up the way of faith? Who's cut in on you from believing the truth? And so here we see in a way this leadership group is the checking line of Satan. The reason why I say that is because Jesus said to his followers, look, I'm going to send you out as sheep among wolves. As sheep among wolves. Check this out in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as serpents and as innocent as doves. This speaks to what we're talking about, being cool and calm under pressure. You ever watch Discovery Channel? You look at snakes. And I've done it from time to time to overcome my fear of snakes. I can't stand snakes. And I always would say, well, biblically, I want to be like Jesus and squash the snake. I can't stand them. Lucifer was a serpent. He crawled on his belly. So there you go. So here we have this be shrewd as a serpent. They're cunning. They're waiting for their time to strike. But if you notice with a serpent, it's not continuous striking. They strike once and for good. Once and for good. Their bite is lethal. And I got thinking about this. Well, wait a second. The way Peter and John responded, they in a way was a strike of truth. Once and with the proper effect. They were saying, this happened in the name of Jesus. 